joining me now is Dr. Patrick Soon Shong, founder of Immunibio and the leader of several other biotech firms, billionaire scientists, as well as the owner of the LA Times. Thank you so much for joining me today, Dr. Patrick. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. There's so much going on with COVID right now and, and, and in the biotech world, we have so much to talk about today. I want to start off with, of course, the COVID vaccine that you're pursuing. I think there's a lot of uh, you know, concern about the variants and, and how they're taking over. We clearly see that now. And just the idea that there is still going to be a need sometime from now after the first wave of vaccinations for vaccines. So fill us in on where you are right now with this vaccine that you're working on. Yeah, so, you know, I think we've taken the approach that in order to really get rid of this virus at the end of the day, you need to clear the infected cell, very much like we've taken an approach against cancer. So we developed a vaccine that is addressing T cells as well as the antibodies and took a vaccine construct that not just uh, put in the S but the innards of the virus called the nucleocapsid, which is responsible for replication. So our approach was to develop a construct <clears throat> using a second generation adenovirus as the vector. And um, as excitingly, develop an oral formulation as well as a liquid formulation. So you have one vaccine, three routes of administration, driving hopefully T cells and uh, B cells and clearing the virus. All right, so we have a different method of delivery now too. And I know that there are others that are looking at this oral. Why pursue that route uh, when we see so many just going for the standard injection? Well, I think if you look at this, a billion people uh, in the developing world will not get the vaccine. And unless you vaccinate the entire planet, we won't get rid of this pandemic because you'll have ongoing smoldering mutations, especially in the undeveloped world where people are immunosuppressed with HIV, TB. So in order to have the cold chain and have easy global distribution, not only do you need oral, but you need room temperature oral. So the challenge was how could you take an adenovirus, maintain its stability at room temperature um, and have it delivered? And happily or excitingly, we've actually uh, achieved that challenge and tested it with barter in our non-human primate studies where we gave the sub-Q prime an oral boost. And what we were able to find was a complete protection in the sense that zero viral replication uh, after the viral challenge um, following uh, this immunization with this protocol. And that's the protocol we're pursuing now uh, in clinical trials. I know that definitely the idea of heat stable has always been a challenge for the developing world. So it's it's nice to see that this round, um, you know, in the response, we're definitely seeing more of that. But broadly speaking, of course, there's also a lot more energy around uh, new ideas, novel ideas, and biotech in general seems to be really picking up right now. Investors can't get enough of it. It's something that people are trying to learn about. What would you say is different to you now uh, compared to when you started your companies? Well, I think it's what's exciting is that I think finally the um, concepts of are caught up with the technology that we've, over the last uh, 10 years we've developed. You know, I sold my two companies uh, to Celgene then and Fresenius for the sole purpose of activating the immune system and went stealth for about a decade. And the first thing we wanted to develop was a natural killer cell, which we consider nature's first responder. And then launch this company called NanQuest, so we can get the off-the-shelf natural killer cell. The second thing we wanted to do was develop a T-cell activation. And so we brought on IL-15. And the third thing we wanted to do was bring on an adenovirus that actually can actually generate memory. When you integrate these three, you activate then the entire immune system and we created the whole genomic sequencing platform so we can identify this thing called the neo epitope. And finally, I think the world is caught up at least to the concept that whole genome sequencing is important to get the neo epitope. Uh, the adenoviruses now be made famous because of um, uh, COVID and natural killer cells has now come to the fore and showing that actually checkpoint therapy alone, unfortunately, will only give you very short, short, short duration um, responses. So I think the uh, biotech world, uh, very much like the tech world, it takes time for these concepts to sink in of these combination therapies with uh, low dose chemotherapy and having your body being activated and that's immunity bio. 
which we just launched as a company. Yeah, you did that and you did it in sort of a reverse merger and, and you usually spin out or the idea generally for biotechs has always been the name of game is to spin out or to have, you know, like a large pharma company acquire. But in this case, uh, you let go of the Nant uh, name and, and decided to make Immunity Bio the lead. What, what spurred that change? Well, you know, I look, I created the, 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 the Nant platform on the one hand, the Nant Health, in order to create the GPS cancer so that we can actually identify the new epitope. I then launched Nant Quest in order to create the off the shelf natural killer cell. So this was 2015 and 2016. So six years ago, these two Nant companies. Then I had my final company called Nant Cell. And it became apparent to me that people were getting confused about these, the words, because they were so similar and, and what does one company do versus the other? And really what I was trying to do was to try and simplify each of these companies in terms of its own uh, domains. And health in my world was to develop what I call the human signal engine, monitor the person remotely and develop uh, genomic sequencing so we can precision, create precision medicine. Nan Quest was to develop this off-the-shelf natural killer cell, but create a product, not a process. So at Nan Quest, I spent three years at risk building huge manufacturing capacity. We now have 400,000 square feet of GMP 2000 liter scale manufacturing capacity. So that we can cry preserve these cells and hang them uh, at the bedside. And then Nan Cell, which is now Immunity Bio, was to then orchestrate all of this platform using the adenovirus. But what was key about this adenovirus is that it could be given in the presence of ad immunity. So it's a second generation adenovirus and we were at 13 phase one, two trials. So in Nancel, we created this quilt program, Q-U-I-L-T, which I call quantum oncotherapeutics because we need to modulate <clears throat> all these and orchestrate so I was taking a natural killer cell and I was taking an adenovirus and I was taking an IL-15. And lo and behold, we were seeing complete remissions in pancreatic cancer, complete remissions in triple negative breast cancer, complete remissions in bladder cancer, complete remissions in head and neck cancer, complete remissions in Merkel cell cancer. And it became clear then that we were on the right path. And to, to maybe take away the confusion, now put Humpty Dumpty back together again <laughs> And so we merged um, my two companies, of which I was a major shareholder, and allowed the majority, the minority this time, to take the vote and if they wanted this. And we did, and it now is Muti Bio. We now have a company that I believe has the broadest platform. We have 17, one seven, first in human molecules, tested already in 1,800 patients in 40 phase one, two, three clinical trials with 25 phase two, three trials, randomized trials, some of them underway. So that was a sort of coming out party of, okay, this is immunity bio. It's, yeah, definitely a very robust pipeline that you have in the works there with, with everything put together. But you started off really focused on cancer and a lot of energy put in there and now have a lot more going on uh, with a focus also on infectious disease. Are you planning to span both going forward or is infectious disease sort of a, an, a call to right now? It's actually not. Uh, so in 2009, we did the H1N1 vaccine, believe it or not, with the adenovirus. We were before uh, even COVID in clinical trials with HIV. We are in clinical trials with HIV. Ironically, 2019, literally the month, uh, I think October 2019, two months before even COVID was announced, a paper was published on uh, Lassa fever with our adenovirus. So we're deep into using the adenovirus um, for infectious diseases and IL-15 for HIV. And then COVID hit. So it looks like it was, you know, funnily in a funny, sad way, as if our company was sort of built um, organizationally to deal with infectious diseases on one hand and cancer. Because at the end of the day, biologically, I see that as the same biological problem in the human being. Your body either has a cancerous cell, which is bad for you, or you have an infected cell, which is bad for you. And that the system that you've been built with, the natural killer cell, the T cell, the B cell, 
is all being uniformly addressed to actually attack both. And since we have molecules to activate all that system, that's why we're in both diseases. And when you're looking at this from the perception of being able to, you know, have as many uh, things going on as you do, you, you have so many uh, newer sort of age uh, therapies that you're working on. The public uh, sort of discussion still is right now, especially for healthcare, a huge focus, especially because of the pandemic on health equity, on access, on affordability. But there are concerns from employers in recent polls looking at these, some, these emergent, emerging technologies and the cost that will be associated with them. What are your thoughts on, on that, on the need to have more affordable healthcare? I, I completely understand and have empathy for that, frankly, to the point that I think um, if you look at the, if you think COVID is bad with regard to infectious disease as a pandemic, in Africa, more people are going to die from cancer. And there are diseases like, you know, cervical cancer, uh, HPV, Burkitt's lymphoma, um, um, as Peter Hose, who you was on your show, talks about these ne neglected tropical diseases that actually cause cancer. So not only do we need to address them for our country, uh, which can afford some of this healthcare, but more importantly, I believe, for the rest of the world, um, developing countries. So yes, we needed to find a way <clears throat> where these uh, technologies could be scaled at a lower cost. And that's why we took this position that we were going to, from the outset, you can't have a million dollar car T cell pro program <laughs> going and bankrupt, um, bankrupt the family um, from that. So we, ha we had to figure out how to take these processes and create products. And that's what we've done, at least with cell therapy. And then simultaneously, as you add combination therapies, you have to find a way in which these combination therapies can be given at a, at a reasonable cost. On the other hand, however, I think what we're gonna do is actually improve quality of life without the toxicities associated with it, without the hospitalization, without the infectious disease, without the neutropenias and the infections. And that's another way of actually addressing some of these costs. So definitely we need to keep looking at, at this avenue then. And then my last question for you is looking back on, on all that you've done in, in the last several years, I know that there's been a, a shift in how you've uh, you know taken on some of these companies and what you've been doing. You've expanded beyond healthcare into uh, virtual studios and the newspaper industry with the LA Times. I just wonder, you've also been a very controversial figure in all of this. How, what is the lesson that you think um, has been learned in how to deal with, say, the financial world and industry that you could maybe pass on to smaller biotechs who are hoping to come up in the world? Well, I, look, I think controversial is the word when people don't understand what we're trying to do. And more importantly, when we're trying to make change. And, uh, and I'm happy to be controversial when I say that it's wrong that we should be giving people high dose chemotherapy inducing, actually wiping out the immune system when it's illogical. So, and so we've taken on that multiple areas of industry um, or people are actually generating large amounts of revenue, giving high dose chemotherapy. So that may be controversial and different. And I think why I'm comfortable in my skin about that is to look at the results and have the gratification in my own self when we see patients who are benefiting from that. So, so that's one. The other one is really to truly believe in, in, in the science, right? To follow the science. It doesn't mean that everything we take on is going to be correct, but we really just need to be honest with the science as we, as we follow them. Uh, and the third thing is really to be curious. Um, so the fact that I took on the newspaper, like the LA Times, I believe uh, in democracy. And I think um, if not us who have the resources to actually support um, organizations that are literally failing um, because of platforms, and I won't mention the plat <laughs> platforms uh, that take away the advertising uh, dollars, um, but without local community newspapers, I think we lost as a nation. So yes, I, I, I do take on some of these challenges, but this has been an American dream that allowed me the opportunity to do so, right? So now I think and then with regard to younger people, 
um, I'm, I'm hopeful the inspiration is as follows. Pursue your passion. Believe in yourself and don't get um, averted by, by the naysayers because there will always be naysayers. If you're doing something important, there'll be a naysayer. If you're doing something that really doesn't, nobody cares about, nobody will care about it. anyway. So I think it's important for you to pursue your passion. It's a good attitude to have, certainly, especially when you have to deal with as many uh, different personalities as you do. So Dr. Patrick Sing Chong, thank you so much for joining me today. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Julie.